Welcome back to the S20R project. So, I have started the big recap on with all the coupling capacitors right now, which is going to take a little while to say, ver say the very least. I worked last night on it a bit. I worked for about three hours, I believe, and I got the audio stage done. And this was a major pain because I had to remove the yak here and stuff to gain access to solder in here but yeah we got a new cathode bias, cathode bias resistor new bypass cap and I had to mount it with the label down which sucks because the ground is over here and uh, the positive is over here on pin number 8 of course so that's a bit of a bummer but oh well it doesn't really matter uh, this is the plate bypass, the the one which is permanently attached. I'm using these sort of capacitors to make up values. So this here makes up 0.01 microfarads and uh, this works fairly well. These are very good capacitors rated for a ridiculously high voltage. So these are awesome. So each one of these is 0 0.005 mic and together they become 0, 0 0.01. So these will replace a lot of, a lot of these 0.01s in here. So that's that one there. I also changed the grid leak resistor here because it was way out of tolerance. So we got a new one of those. And the camera is having focusing issues but we got a new one of those. Uh, this capacitor here is the tone capacitor and that one goes to an unused pin here and to a plate and depending on which position you put the tone switch in it connects that capacitor in or out and there's a resistor here which is also part of the tone circuit up there and that's a point oh twenty two. And it's supposed to be a uh, 0 0.02, but 0 0.022 is close enough, so that will do. Uh, another coupling capacitor soldered here. I checked this resistor while I did that. It's good, so we're just leaving that alone. New coupling capacitor in here with heat shrink to protect the leads and uh, solder directly no OEA hooking so that should hold up for a long time but yeah that's that the audio section is complete so we don't need to worry about that anymore I think I'm gonna go ahead and change this point of one going up to the BFO coil here next and uh, this is the capacitor I made up for it here so if you just grab my Fluke 87.5 and we clip that on here and I hold this like so. There you can see 0 0.01 microfarad manual range to make it a bit easier to read. And of course, every capacitor I've pulled out of here has been just incredibly bad. And I've thrown them all in here. This one is open. This one is open. These are super, super leaky. They've gone up to like 10 times their value and they leak so much DC that they're basically just dead shorts. So bye bye. <laughs> and we also have some out of tolerance resistors. Bye bye. <laughs> there is the bumblebee. Well, I'm gonna call these bumblebees all the time because that's what I'm used to. Let's do a insulation resistance test. This meter goes up to 60 mega ohms pretty accurately. Let's Let's have a go here and see what it's at. Whoops, that's a fail. <laughs> it should be showing infinity at this point. This meter shouldn't even register anything. So this is leaky as hell. And uh, a good capacitor, if you do this to this new cap here, you will see that it is basically going to show open circuit to the meters. I'm going to hold this and be careful so I don't touch both sides of the probe. See? Wide open. Alright, and see, I'm just being careful not to hold the other side of the probe because it will go through my body and measure it. See if I touch here, 
it goes to me. But yeah, it is 100% open. This is how a good capacitor should act. Like when a capacitor is so leaky that your ordinary multimeter can pick it up, it is bad. All right, let's check the value of it. That's also a very good indicator that the capacitor is leaking. It's supposed to be 0.01, see what it is. It's 0 0.04, so it's very, very leaky. And it's jumping around all over the place. And the reason the meter will show too large of a value when they're leaky is because it fools the meter, because it takes longer to charge the capacitor up. So the meter will see it as a larger capacitor. In reality, it's just a piece of shit. So yeah, we're gonna replace that. And uh, I'm soldering that wasn't very hard, thankfully. Whoever did this before, because this has been recapped. These did not exist in 1939. Uh, whoever did this before, they were kind enough not to wrap the capacitor completely around. So that made it a bit easier for me. So yeah, we're going to remove this piece of shit and we're going to change it. I'm having some issues, mainly that I don't have enough parts, but then I looked inside this, I have disc caps, and I have a lot of disc caps that would work just fine in here. These are .02s, and that is exactly what we need in some parts of the circuit. So I've been looking here, would it be possible to install some disc caps in some areas of this circuit, and I think most of these bypass capacitors just going to ground they could probably just be replaced with disk capacitors and that would be it because they don't really matter if they drift a little tiny bit so i have those disk caps and uh, i am i am honestly tempted to use them because they are well they are pretty damn reliable i have never seen one of those go bad but in some areas, like here, this is the automatic noise limit. I think I'm going to stick to some polyester. So I'll wire two of these in parallel. And that's going to give us the value that we need there. Um, because this one here is then in the automatic noise limiter circuit. And I think it's pretty important that that one is actually, you know... A good capacitor that doesn't drift but a lot of these are simply ones that go to ground like this one here this one here this one here that's just a cathode bypass across this resistor here that one can just be replaced with a disc cap there's no reason to have you know a polyester film in those positions in fact it's just unnecessary when you can use a disc cap and it will do the same exact job and be 1000 times more reliable than it working just fine. And this big boy here, point or point 0.1, that is the screen grid supply filter. And this one is especially important that we change with, I would go up to bigger values. I think I'm going to use this. And it's grounded over here. There's no reason for it to be grounded over there. We can ground it down here to this ground point. Because it just goes to this side of this power resistor. So we'll shove that in here. It's a bit larger as well. So it should cut down the hum a little bit. Because these radios do have a little bit of hum. By design I think. So because this capacitor is so small. So we're going to put much bigger cap there. Now with my big filter caps here, it's unlikely it's going to hum, but I'm going to change that one with a bigger one anyways. I bet this one is worth a lot of money to audio files. <laughs> anyways, so I have the schematic and it's been a great help because I can look here and see, oh, that capacitor there should probably not be changed with a disk, etc, etc. So it's quite helpful to actually have the schematic when you're recapping sometimes. You know, recapping sounds easy, but sometimes there are things you want to just know. But yeah, I'm gonna change that bloody thing now. So we're gonna have to get in there with the soldering iron. It's not gonna be easy, but I'll I'll manage it. There's nothing so far that's been impossible. It just goes between here and there, so We'll change that one with two of these polyesters and that will be good.
Can't quite remember where I left off, but I changed this. That has been changed. Now I'm on to changing these bypass caps. And this one here goes to ground here. And I'm going to replace it with this disc. It's a 0.025 disc capacitor. So I'm going to change that with that. And you see this little tab here. I'm going to use this instead. This little tab here. There's no reason for this capacitor to go to ground over here at this point. You know, we can just cut that, unsolder it here, and solder our new capacitor to this, because this is the mounting tab of that terminal strip, and this is actually solderable. You can see I did a little test solder here, so we can just take a new cap and solder it on there, between here and here, and that's it. And changing with disc caps is okay in some places, like bypass capacitors, they can be disc. And here is another ground spot there, so you could just reroute that cap to there and it would work just fine, it doesn't matter. You can just connect them wherever you want, that's the advantage with modern parts, they're smaller, so you can put them wherever you would like. In fact, I could probably use this to change that but it has such short leads i think i'm just gonna go with the disc this was a pain <laughs> i swear i've been fighting with this for at least an hour so i ended up unmounting this coil and unsoldering it here and since the screws are inside here i took my plier and i just went in here and i unscrewed them with the plier and that worked, so that gave me just enough access to yeah, you hook this onto this and you solder it like that. That has to be good enough, I can't do any better than that. And I hope the solder joint here is acceptable, I really can't make it much better. <laughs> that solder joint there I had to do with my left hand, so that was almost impossible, but I, I got it, I got it. Um... Yeah, I hope that solder right there holds up. It's hard to tell if that's good or bad. Well, it's a few hours later. It took me about six hours to do all this. Total. And I've been working a little bit and then taking a pause. And working a little bit and taking a pause. But every capacitor has been changed. I managed to get in there and change the two caps there. There is no more paper or waxes left in this thing. All electrolytics have been changed. Everything has been changed. And all the resistors that are left in here shake good, well within tolerance. So we're going to leave those alone. That is basically it. The thing is 100% recapped. That's pretty wild. Yeah, and this is how the work turned out. Let's see if we can get a good stable video clip of that there. Yeah, that's that. I did not put a new line capacitor here from live to chassis i think that's stupid i think that's unnecessarily dangerous it's better to just ground the chassis and be safe now we need to peel all this stuff out of here all this solder garbage because it's obviously not good that it's in here and potentially shorting things out so that needs to be done but yeah, the recap is actually complete, and uh, I think it turned out alright. I did some J-hooking there on that cap, but that's the only cap I have actually J-hooked. And I J-hooked that one, but that's okay. Sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And uh, yeah, no J-hooking was necessary here either. And that one I had to J-hook, of course, because I just couldn't get access to it. So there we go. No more paper. <laughs> we did it. So next up is just a general cleanup of the chassis inside here. Make sure there are no solder balls and stuff. 
clean off my bench a little bit actually quite a bit you can see how much stuff there is and once we've done that we can plop the vacuum bulbs back in attempt to power this thing up and see what happens also now the speaker is just dangling by its wires so that's not good need to do something about that I don't think it's gonna break but it would suck if it did uh, yeah that's it the radio is completely recapped and uh, I think it turned out okay actually <laughs> I really think so. It's rare that I'm happy with my jobs, but this time I am quite happy with this. Okay, I've prepared for testing. I've propped up the speaker here on this so it doesn't strain the wires. Got all the vacuum bulbs in. Hopefully I got them all right. Um, we're going to hook the meter up so that we can mon monitor the voltages. And uh, once we've done that, it is actually dim bulb and variac time. Right, we're on the dim bulb, we have the variac. So, let's see what happens, shall we? And I'm leaving this lamp off so we can see tube glowage. There we go. We're up to 40 volts. And here comes the B+. Plus. Very, very nice. The rectifier tube is really strong. Being able to conduct at such a low voltage. Increasing the voltage slightly. 60 volts. Here we go, more B plus. I think we're having conduction in the audio tube. There's no hum. Let's bring it up a bit more. There we go. I hear something. We're up to 75, 80 volts. Let's bring it up a bit more. Yeah, listen to that. No more hum. So let's get... It is dead silent. That is awesome. don't have an antenna hooked up but it is alive still running on the bulb limiter we probably don't need to do that to be honest but I want to check a few things first let's remove this let's put the meter up on its holder let's check our Second B plus. Let's check the screen grid supply voltage. Looking good. Yeah, all the voltages are looking good. Uh, let's check our anode voltage on the output tube. Looking good. Check our cathode voltage if we can looking good as you can see no more leakage here no leakage on the control grid good everything is looking perfect Everything important at least. Let's go ahead and put this clip back on. So we can keep an eye on that. And I think we will stop fooling around. 
270 volts. We're at 100 volt B plus. Let's see how much current do we have. We have 100 volts going in, I mean. We have 270 B plus, which is nice and hot. 600 milliamps, so it's drawing about 60 watts. 100 volts. Yeah, it's looking pretty good. Not sure what band we're on, but this is seeming this is quite promising. We need to hook up an antenna. 287B plus. And that's at 101 volts, so it's bringing it up. Here we have 110. That gives us 318. Let's bring it up a bit more. 115, 327. That's looking good, and nothing is exploding. It's doing 700 milliamps. Awesome. I would like to say that this thing is alive. That's pretty sick. <laughs> so now we need to hook up an antenna to this and see if we can make it receive works got our gain down let's turn it up Now we check what happens when I look what happens when I turn the lamps on. <laughs> it gets very noisy. But here we go, it's working. And again it's just with the clay blade as an antenna. That's working.
Well, that's it. Let's see. So there you go. Beat frequency oscillator is working. Everything seems to be working. Just like it should, so that's awesome. <laughs> See how hot these resistors are getting. Just slightly warm. Slightly warm. Slightly warm. Good. There we go, it works! <laughs> That's awesome!